I'm nervous, I'm scared because I've never really told this story. I've told the business side of it, but I've never told the personal side of it. And really what this story comes down to, you guys, is a story of a young uh, medic or entrepreneur, if you will. And it applies the word entrepreneur. I don't want it to segregate, but to everyone in this room. And just a couple of thoughts. I've dreamt about this moment. I've dreamt, I've, I've talked all over the US, all over the world, but I've dreamt to talk to you guys. It's because you're like-minded. You guys get it. You understand what I've gone through because you guys have all gone through something very similar in your life. And that means a lot to me. So I am honored to talk to you guys. I put good peeps up here. Mandy had mentioned uh, none of this or any of this discussion that I have that I'm going to have with you today really doesn't come down to me. It's I surrounded myself with people so much better than myself. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. One of those examples is my wife. Um, as an entrepreneur, you go through a lot of emotional struggles. You have phenomenal days. You have really down days. But I, when I came home, she always made me feel like I was a hero. I had a board of directors that held me accountable every quarter, every year at annual shareholders meeting. And then whenever we came and planned year over year, they held me accountable to my financial needs. And I always get mocked up here because I put competitors. Interestingly enough, my company was acquired by my largest competitor. But that's not why I put them up there. I put them up there because they were better than me. They were the high mark. That's a good thing from my perspective. Their product design was unbelievable. The way that they went to market, the way that they communicated with customers, the way that they just presented themselves in the market was better. And I loved it. I was always looking at their products. I was always looking at their operations manuals. I was looking at everything that they did. I was talking to their customers. I was so influenced by what they did in the EMS field. It was very intriguing to me. So surround yourself with as many good people in life and also professionally. So a little bit about my story. I'm going to get choked up because it's a tough one. <laughs> to get through. In 96, I was wandering my way through college. I had gone to a private uh, high school. I went to a private college. I was focused on a five-year MBA in international business with a minor in German. And I was just burnt out. My sophomore year, I'm like, I'm done with this. Uh, I really can't continue on with it. And I was inspired by family. My cousin, Andy Walkingshaw, he probably doesn't even know this, but he drove up to my grandmother's house one day. He was in his paramedic uniform with his ambulance, and I just was, what better person to symbolize service to someone else than a medic? Do you guys know how much medics make? EMT basics? $7.14 an hour was my starting wage. At that time, paramedics, top paramedic paid in the state of Utah, $44,000. Come on. These people are saving lives eight to 15 times a day. $7.14 an hour. I love Dandy. Because he wasn't doing it for the wage. Most paramedics, most firefighters, they're not doing it for the wage. And I absolutely love that. So in 1998, I enrolled in my first EMT basic class. And I'll tell you right now, you guys, six months in, I was obsessed with the EMS field. I was obsessed for a couple of reasons. One, because I absolutely loved patient care. I was the guy not like my partners from time to time who had been in for a number of years. I was not burned out. I loved going on a heroin overdose or cracked at that same guy three times in the same day. Hey, Hart. Hey, what's going on? You know, I just took you to hop back in. Hey, what's going on, Chuck? Hop back in. You know, go back up to the University of Utah Medical Center. This happened over and over again. I loved it. And let me tell you something else. Good calls for a paramedic are bad calls for you. Because if I'm on a rollover ejection with five bodies all over the world, I'm like, yes. I get to use all of my patient care skills. Is that guy dead? He needs to be innovated. Okay, let's go. Right? I'm really excited. 
But everyone else is like, oh my gosh. But we're like, this is going to be a good day for a medic. And you hope for these days over and over again, right? So, but there was a problem. There was a problem in our industry. And the problem in our industry was the fact that I ran 8 to 15 calls a day and I lifted people that weighed a lot. They weighed 300, 400, 250 pounds. And do you know what we did? We fatigued ourselves to death. We really did. And I had a bunch of partners that were going to light duty because of back injuries and EMS. They had to constantly lift patients. Lightweight male, lightweight female, even if you'd been in for a number of years, you just you couldn't do it anymore. And you'd herniate a disc in your back and your career was over. And it was really sad. So this is where there's two sides of this story. I turned something in my life, much like you have something in your life, but I decided to take my, my professional career and turn it into a very personal experience. And I invented a track device that mounted to the bottom of an ambulance cot so I didn't have to carry patients down flights of stairs. Guys, in 2005, I ran the company right into the ground um, because I thought this product was revolutionary. I tested it in the field. I thought it was super great. But as Sarah could attest, I ran it into the ground. My father-in-law happened to be in the fire and EMS service. We moved back in with our parents. We lost everything. And I had to look him in the eye every day. And that was tough. That was tough. But we clawed at concrete and we invented a very cool product. And that product was an evacuation sled. About seven years ago, the way that you vertically evacuated a hospital is you were going to be carried, every single one of you, if you've ever been in a hospital or been in a bed, or you will, don't worry, it's coming, but you would, be, you would get carried out three-point on a sheet down a flight of stairs. That's how, if, it, if the building was on fire, that's how they evacuated it. Well, we invented a sled. Do you know what one thing, the biggest motivation for wanting to get in here it wasn't to go create money, it was to create a product that changed my caregivers' lives. But the byproduct of that helped individual patients. I never realized that. <clears throat> it was very profound to me. So, something I want to mention on the personal side. There's a lot of personal stuff going on. I gained 110 pounds in five years. I've lost a little bit of that now. Um, I had four kids. Um, over the course of, of growing this business. Um, we moved eight times in nine years, one, out, one time out of state to Michigan after uh, our company had been bought. We grew as a family, but I'll tell you right now, we grew, we grew apart and we also grew back together. So there's a couple of key takeaways. The, the biggest key takeaway is that as a medic, I didn't invent a product to make money. We won a ton of awards, but what we did is when we were in hospitals and we watched people weep over these great products, over these inventions that were created, we knew we had set out to accomplish this amazing mission, which was just to innovate and change the world through, it can be through anything, right you guys? It doesn't have to be a product, it can be anything that you have. So a couple of things, make it your passion, invent something that outlives you. I think we've heard that a couple of times today. Learn how to take steps together, surround yourself with people, people better than you, and never give up. Thanks. <laughs>